locked in to the hottest station on the planet. Resistance is futile. The revolution has begun. You're listening to Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo, here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio, the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. We talk a lot about mindset because mindset is so important. And today's guest is really going to niche down and help you to deal with mindset. I'm speaking with Joanne Victoria. And when I say niche down, what I mean is she partners with IT professionals who want more success, more confidence, more fun, and more inner peace. She is come from a, a long line of experience in business, sales and marketing, business development. She's the author of six books, including Lighting Your Path, How to Create the Life You Want, and Vision with a Capital V, Create the Business of Your Dreams. She's the host of her own podcast, The San IT Project, and uh, it's just great to have her on. Joanne Victoria, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Thank you so much, Ralph. I'm glad to be here, and I hope to be a benefit to your listeners. Uh, yeah, the podcast that I host, uh, it says San IT, but I call it Sanity, and uh, that's <laughs> what I help. <laughs> it's, we, need, we need more of it, and that's uh, what I'm uh, fundamentally helping the IT professionals as well as others, but primarily my focus right now is IT pros. Sanity. And I help them. I like that. Sanity, Sanity project. Yeah. That is that is an interesting play of words. I really like that. Well done. Thank you. It, I had a little help with that from some people on Facebook, but when I put it together, it became the Sanity Project podcast, and that's the way I refer to it. And everything I do is to help with uh, to help IT pros with the problem of work life balance, which is bigger than most people think it is. And over fifty percent of workers today experience uh, explosion of the work life balance plan, hmm. and that's not good because people are getting really, really sick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mentally, mentally and physically, and that's why they change jobs a lot. Sure. Sure. Well, you are a perfect guest for Rebelpreneur Radio because we're all about helping people build the business they need so they can live the life they want. And that's really kind of what you're talking about in your book, Lighting Your Path, Creating the Life You Want, and then Vision with a capital V, Creating the Business of Your Dreams. So uh, there's the work-life balance uh, in, in your books, in this podcast, in your sanity project. I love that. Thanks for explaining that. Um, so I want to hear more, but first tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got interested in this and how you got started. Well, it, I had a cross-country trip several years ago and landed in California from New York uh, with three kids, one cat, 12 pieces of luggage, <laughs> and one, and one that I had $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> and within three days, I had a job, television for the kids, and a car. All wow. the things you need to live in California. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And... I used all the skills and personality I had, and I became the CFO of an investment company. Then I went into real estate, and I had a background before that when I was managing an FBO, which is a private part of an airport. FBO is fixed-based operator on the field where the private planes come in. And I was taught by the person who took over the airport how to do the books. I learned that became the CFO, and um, then I went into real estate, and it happened to be during a recession, but I reached my first year goals. Then I became a manager of a multi-office real estate company, then the owner of my own real estate firm, and then I worked exclusively for a California builder as their real estate broker. Hmm. Wow. And then I, 
yeah, it was, uh, when I look at it, it's, it's shocking to me how the, <laughs> the things that happened. But then I quit real estate because I got a phone call from a friend and he asked me if I wanted to attend to participate in a workshop. I said, sure, where do I send the check? I lived in an area where everybody attended workshops or mm-hmm. developed workshops and it was Marin County, California, and it was, I think, the capital of the world, <laughs> the universe for that stuff. Yeah, I, th- I think and you're it, right. And then he said, no, I want you to present with me. So I presented my first workshop with him, which was called the Anger Workshop. And then I decided to uh, label myself as a coach uh, and then a consultant. And my business included real estate agents and brokers and several industries, including the alternative healthcare industry. And then when I moved to Seattle in 2006, and I said the date, but I'm sure this is going to last for a lot longer than 2019. And I decided to expand my client profile to include information technologies, employees and workers, as well as IT executives. And here I am. And and here you are. So from this very, um, very interesting path of lots of experience, you ended up in IT. What 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 brought you to the decision to focus your talents on helping IT professionals? Because I'm surrounded by them. Uh, where I live, uh, Boeing aircraft or what, however it's labeled is about a mile from me. 15 mm. minutes away is Microsoft, Facebook, GoDaddy, uh, Amazon, Google, and that's just the big ones. Mm-hmm. So they are all here. And then I, you know, learned, educated myself, but learned the problems of the market and realized that they were the most put upon uh, market, uh, what do you want to call it, people in the in the working market. They are sometimes they have to work 24 seven and that's deplorable. Uh, they don't have very good management. So I try to help working with managers and working with employees as well as contractors, but I'm surrounded by them. Uh, on the block where I live, it is filled with um, IT engineers. Not that I work with those guys because they have their own special group, but I work with, you know, UX managers, agile team facilitators, directors, master developers, entrepreneurs, webmasters. Uh, there's so many titles and they change per company, but that's what we are filled with. And Seattle had 125,000 people move to it last year. And that's just in Seattle proper. So we've probably had, a quarter of a million people move, a lot of them from California and overseas to this area, and they're all in IT. Wow, that that's amazing. Now, just out of curiosity, did you sure. did you focus on IT and decide Seattle is where you need to be, or did you go to Seattle and then do the market research and settle upon IT? Uh, the latter. I mm-hmm. had no focus. Actually, I thought I was going to go back into real estate for a while and took my Washington State real estate license, which I still have. Um, In fact, for a while, I kept both California and Washington current, but uh, I came here not knowing what I was going to do. I had really, it was a whole new, another beginning for me, and I was grateful for that. But uh, I'm now living in an area, and I was living in an area that didn't quite have that context of IT. So when I moved to where I live now, it became obvious that IT was extremely relevant. They were having a boatload of problems. They Companies have a hard time keeping the employees, and the employees have a difficult time staying, especially when they're not treated well hmm. uh, oh. or managed well. Yeah. Well, that brings me to the next question is we, we're talking mm-hmm. about work-life balance and it sounds like IT professionals are, are very out of balance. What would be the what's the biggest problem you see with the people that you're helping? Well, I would say uh, what I'm going to say might not even seem logical, uh, but I would say the most common problem is their lack of clarity on what's important in their life. Hmm. 
they don't know. They just know it's a mess or they may be overtired. They may not have time for a relationship. They may be having problems at work with their teammates or their managers and supervisors, but mostly they're not capable because they're, they're so imbued. Their brain is just so imbued with content that they have no opportunity to think clearly about what they really want because they just don't know that there's a method for doing that. It's not hmm. complicated, but there is a way to get past that. And and I would imagine that most of them, if not all of them, are, are probably well paid. So it's not a question. Oh, yeah. of, it's not a question of compensation. It, you're saying it's a question of clarity. Yes, uh, money becomes actually a problem for them because. They spend it as they get it. Some of them do. The young ones, the single ones, uh, the older ones, the, the more mature worker uh, might not even have invested in anything except the home that they live in because real estate is uh, creeping up in value here on a daily basis. <clears throat> and they just don't know what to do. They have the money. They have the opportunity. And they don't know that there's help. Uh, I present that help. And, you know, we hope it's moving along well for the ones that I work with. And hopefully I get more to work with and help. Yeah. Yeah. So so you, it's interesting that you say lack of clarity, because um, <laughs> it seems like in, in the last couple of weeks, just about everybody I've talked to has has identified lack of of clarity or not knowing what they want or not having a vision or not having a purpose. And all of this is uh, all of these uh, language, different languages that we use to describe kind of the same issue. Uh, people mm -hmm. just don't know what they want. And so uh, particularly with IT professionals, you say that there's a process for handling that. How do we help people, uh, especially IT people, but anyone who's listening, um, how do we help people to get the clarity that that they don't have? How, how, what's some what's some things we can do to help them get moving in that direction? Well, I'm going to give you some things. There are five actually, and they're incorporated in a free free report that I have on my website. All they've got to do is subscribe, and they'll get their own copy of. Five steps to achieve work-life balance. Perfect. It works for IT. Yeah, it's free and it's filled with information. And step one is they have to make a list of issues and challenges standing in their way. Um, people don't think anything is standing in their way. Not only is their job and their home life partially standing in their way, but the thoughts in their minds as well. And their um, relationships to things outside of themselves. Most people find distractions in the world of politics. I don't. It's a waste of my time because I have no <laughs> control. I agree. But yeah. people are spending too much time worrying about uh, events as opposed to themselves. And they have complaints or issues with, you know, social groups, people, whatever it might be. But they have to make a list of things, you know, that stand in their way. You know, they got a list of family, money, work, health, society, and community, and then look at how these things affect their lives. So standing One in thing, standing in the way in, in standing in the way in terms of what? Not being able to to feel what they're trying to feel, the happiness, the success. Yes. Well, happy, I, I look at happiness as a choice. They might feel satisfied or confident, but happiness is kind of a choice. But what it is, is what's, what happens is they contribute to the list that they're writing down. Mm -hmm. They are putting their time in insufficient problems, goals that they can never achieve. They cannot change, change anything outside of themselves at this phase until they know what they truly want until they can, you know, create a life vision or even they haven't even determined the values they contribute to their own life. Mm. So these are the underground, you know, we're building a foundation first. Mm -hmm. And okay. in order to build a foundation, we have to know what the ingredients are. The ingredients in this foundation is to find out what kind of a building you want to build, mm. and which is the list of, of issues and challenges. 
and all the complaints you have, because all of this stands in the way of clarity. Clarity of thought, clarity of mind, and clarity of deed. You can't think clearly if you're in debt, unhappy at your job, sad about your relationship, uh, worried about politics, taking care of your grandmother, um, having an errant child, <laughs> you know, all, all of those things that come in. Yeah. You can't think, you know, you have to know that this is, gotta, you know, the ingredients in the concrete to pour the foundation have to be clean. Yeah. You can't have too much sand. You can't have too much rock. You know, if anybody's in construction out there, they know what it is. Yeah. And they have to figure out what they're responsible for, who they're responsible to. Most people aren't even aware of that. Yeah. So, so it starts with, with making that list, uh, issues, challenges, obstacles, hindrances, whatever. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. And well, I'm writing this that, down and I'm going to, I'm going to go download it, but I'm writing okay. it down and, and taking notes Absolutely. as we talk. So, uh, that's the first step of, of five. What's the second step? And the second step is to establish your values. Values provide you with the strong foundation. Most people work in this life without values. They don't even know what a value is. It's the way, hopefully, a healthy person uh, wants to be in this world. Hmm. Uh, my values, for example, have not changed for a while, and they're very simple. One is to show up. Another one is to be on time. Another one is to keep your word. And the fourth one is to tell the truth. Yeah, and those, are, those are really simple, aren't they? They are. And I work hard, at not hard, but I work diligently at complying with those every day. They can change. They can do so many options for values that I provide, but there are many out there. But for me, showing up and, you know, that means to be present, uh, be on time. Well, Many people are not on time. And, you know, I subscribe to the military sort of timing thing. If you're early, you're on time. Mm -hmm. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, don't bother. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're tough. Man, if, if you're my coach, you're going to be holding me accountable, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, you got to realize I'm giving you all this in a few minutes. We're depending upon how tough the people are that work with me and they either are committed to changing their lives or not. Mm -hmm. um, I can't work well with a wishy-washy person. I used to work with small businesses and if they, they couldn't be wishy-washy because their uh, livelihood was at stake. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to stay committed to what they say they want. And then, you know, I find ways to keep, help them keep on their path. And I think this value system is really good because if they get stuck, they can always refer to what are my values? Am so, I living my values? True. So we have to establish what those values are. And, and then, yeah. I would, I, then I would imagine there's some sorting, some prioritization of values. Um, and, and different people have different values and they also have different priorities within their values, right? Absolutely. Uh, on the handout, uh, on the free report, I give a selection of values if people need that list. And I ask them first to choose their top 10 that speak to them and then choose top four from that top 10 list. Hmm. And it's also, people can also change. Their value system will change once they realize what a value is and how it affects their lives. And if mm -hmm. they've never used values before, it will become obvious quickly. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's a good beginning. What's the third step? Create a life vision. Is that it? Number three. Yes. Create a life vision. Not many people, they think they need a business vision and corporations have, you know, visions for their business and missions and goals, et cetera. But you need a vision for your life as well. And that's really important because otherwise you're going to follow what are the direction of others, including your family or your work bosses and things like that. Mm. Yeah. You need to, ha yeah, you, you need to have a clear vision of where you want your life to go uh, and how you want it to be. You know, where do you, where do you want to live? Where do you want to work? What kind of people do you want in your life? 
what are the outcomes you want to have occur in your life. And unless you put it in writing, and I'm old fashioned in the other way too, you can type it up, but I would like to see you do it by hand first. Mm, yeah. Be- because you have the connection between your handwriting and your brain. Mm, yeah, your neurons that- connect. Your neurons connect at a base level. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, so is a life vision statement, uh, is that going to be a paragraph, a page, or it, it all depends, right? It all depends, but I think that um, keep it brief. I don't think it needs to be 75 words. It could be 50 words, and that would be more than enough because other things come after that. Mm-hmm. They need the, the plan comes after that. You know, you create a vision like, okay. Um, I'm going to live in Paris. Um, and then you say, well, when are you going to go? Well, 2020. Okay. How are you going to get there? Well, I don't know. Well, there can't be an, I don't know. You have to have an answer. Mm. So those would be the outcomes that you would, you know, one of the outcomes that I'm playing with, but you know, you need to have an outcome for that. Sure. So is the vision about the outcome or is it about the method? The vision is about what you want, Mm -hmm. because people, first, they want to know what's in it for them. So they have an opportunity to decide what's in it for them. So that's their life vision. How they do that, for example, if somebody wants to retire at the age of 45, well, that's a great vision. How are you going to do that? Right. That comes into the plan, the strategies with the plan to achieve the dreams you want that are located in your life vision. Perfect. It, is that number yeah. four, by the way? That's number four. How about that? I'm tracking right yep. along with you. Yeah. You certainly are. So, <laughs> you know, it's not complicated. It's only going to be busy. Mm-hmm. If people have never done this type of work before to do it on their own, uh, which a lot of people like to work on their own, but to do it on their own will be mm, stressful. Maybe yeah. not that stressful, but somewhat stressful. And they can always email me or call me for some advice. But of course, I'd much rather have them as clients to go a little bit slower. Sure. Uh, So that's step four. And that's where you create the goals on how to get what you want. And then step five, which is the final step, is accountability. How do you hold yourself accountable to your goals? Yeah, because you you can make all of these wonderful plans, and a lot of people do, a lot of solopreneurs do, a lot of business owners, and rebel, even rebelpreneurs, right? Yeah, even yes. even they make lots of business plans and life goals, but who holds you accountable for those decisions? If you're not working for someone else, uh, then accountability is a is a missing ingredient that prevents you from getting where you want to be very often. Well, that's where I come in when I work with people. But if I'm not working with someone, um, they I give them some hints on how to uh, be accountable, you know, questions about, you know, if they've made goals, have they changed the way they speak with others? Uh, are they working on their life vision? There are questions they can ask themselves. If nothing has changed, then they call, got to call me. Uh, because Mm -hmm. that's part of what I provide is accountability to the process. You know, as you say, people can make all sorts of say anything, but they need to follow through and somebody has to help them follow through. Yeah. But if, you know, it, it does require action, you know, they don't want to waste their life, uh, in making goals that are, you know, too simple and they need to take it easy on themselves a bit But if they question the theories that they came out with in steps one, two, three, and four and get positive responses, then they're holding themselves accountable. But Mm. if they can't, if they haven't completed the first four steps, they're not going to be able to use the first four steps as an accountability platform. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And and then your, your, your vision and your goals, they have to be large enough to inspire you, but not so big that uh, they demoral, demoralize you because you're not making progress fast enough. That's something that you work with your clients on, right? 
Well, absolutely. One of the biggest goal, goals people put out there, which is ludicrous because they don't understand the concept is, you know, I want to make a million dollars. And my question <laughs> is why? My first question is why? My last question would probably be why? You know, why do you want to make a million dollars? Well, because Joe has a million dollars. <laughs> well, what are you going to do with your million dollars? Oh, I don't know. Buy a car. Okay. Because that's, you know, if it's a guy, that's their first, you know, anything, <laughs> anything with four wheels, you know, yeah, so, yeah. or two wheels, anything that moves, <laughs> you know, not the boat, you know, the right. boat, I, you know, nobody buys a boat, you know, it's an alligator, <laughs> but, um, you know, and it's like, you have to come up and the clarity comes in that instance when I'm saying, why do you want a million dollars? What are you going to do with it? You know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's a giveaway that they need to do something with that money. But people don't realize that they have an obligation to do something constructive with the money that they receive. If they want to be, you know, considered, you know, um, a helpful human being, helpful to this planet. And, you know, when you go back to goals, it's part of, they have a gift. They have, they're obligated to share their gift with the world as well. And I'm not saying you have to give away your money, although that's not a bad idea to tithe a little bit if that works for someone. But the other thing is they have to help others with that money and not just put it in their pocket or under the mattress and leave it there. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's got to be constructive. And I, I think, and the, they, yeah, I think the reason it's, I think the reason that is so compelling and constructive it's because you, you need something bigger than yourself to get you out of bed in the morning. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, to keep you working on this vision and, and creating this this life that you want. And however you do it, whether it's working for Microsoft or whether it is starting your own small business, uh, you got to have a, a vision and a purpose that goes beyond your personal, getting your personal needs met. I, I don't think any great business was ever built and certainly no great life was ever built just by limiting ourselves to what we can do for ourselves. It's always uh, what we can build and how we can be a blessing to other people. And that gives us the the largeness of vision to be able to see things through when things get very difficult. Yes. People, I, I think there are a lot of people who have a lot of uh, presence in the world, uh, make a lot of money and have a lot of uh, opportunities to help others. I don't think that they have realized their true nature and the fact that they should have huge, huge visions, outreaching visions and huge goals. Because I said recently in a post, you know, if you shoot for the top of the mountain, no matter how large it is, you're going to hit dirt. If you shoot for the moon, you're at least going to hit a star. <laughs> so you have to go that high. People are afraid to think that big. Mm. They're afraid to live their dream, to, to, to give their gift to the, to the universe, to give their gift to others. So th this all, all of these five steps helps people uh, understand what balance is, balance in their life. And I say it's about strength. And being in the moment, because you, you, there's no such thing as equal time for work and equal time for balance, although people try to say that. They don't try to say that. They do say that. Well, that's right. what balance is. But it is, it's, it's uh, I say that the true work, the true work-life balance is peacefulness, hmm. not yeah. stress, not earning money, not being smarter, bigger, tall, and more beautiful, more handsome than the next person, but that you are at peace with yourself. Whether you work, if you work 18 hours a day and that works for you, God bless. If you work no days and it works for you, God bless. Whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is part of the, the results and the outcomes that are not labeled are many with people. Most of them become very empowered in their lives and they have an easy way to make decisions and be kind to others in the process. I love that. I love the philosophy in, in your step-by-step -step approach. Um, tell our listeners where they can go get five steps to achieve work-life balance, that free guide. Well, they can go to my website at askjoannevictoria.com. That's A-S-K-J-O-A-N-N-E, Victoria, like the queen, 
V-I-C-T-O-R-I-A dot com. And if they go across the top uh, field, I don't know what else it's called, you'll see where it says subscribe. And if you don't want to stay in there and receive my daily emails, unsubscribe. It matters not to me. Hmm. Uh, but once you subscribe, you will receive a PDF download of five steps to achieve work-life balance. Excellent. And follow the yellow brick road. And as I say, you can always you know, sign up to chat with me about what your results are, uh, what your questions are. I provide a lot of open areas for people to communicate with me that don't cost anything. Because Perfect. I think that if, if you have the opportunity to help, you need to help. And well, that's my opportunity to help. I, I think what you're doing is so powerful and so inspirational and, and much needed. So I encourage our listeners, go check that out. Ask Joanne Victoria dot com. And we'll have that link on the website as well. Um, well, Joanne, this has really been remarkable to uh, to think about these things in terms of um, IT. And I think we can take those lessons and apply them to a lot of uh, different industries where people are basically uh, burned out and trying to find the meaning of life. So this has been very uh, inspirational as as well as motivational. Um, any final thoughts or words of wisdom or big takeaways that you'd like to uh, share with our listeners? Well, one of the things that's very important to me is that people don't hide their gifts and their skills and their talents. So I always say the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. And this report will help you along that way. Be mm -hmm. who you truly are. Give your gift to the world. Wonderful. I've been speaking with Joanne Victoria. She partners with IT professionals who want more success, more confidence, more fun, and more inner peace. Make sure you download that free guide, Five Steps to Achieve Work-Life Balance, on her website, askjoannevictoria.com. Joanne, it's been a real pleasure to get to know you and to have you on Rebelpreneur Radio today. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate being here. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.